Welcome everybody to another exclusive episode of Lockdown 23 and 1. Well, today we got some breaking news about the inmates that escaped in Idaho. Something happened during their escape that I pretty much assumed was going to happen. I spoke about it on the live stream. Live stream is private now because I knew I was going to do updates and I don't want a bunch of videos with these guys' faces up. So before we get into it, as always, if you enjoy this type of content and you're new, hit that like, subscribe, notification bell, set it to all. And of course, check out my playlist with many more videos for you to start watching today. So the title of the article I'm going to be reading today is Escaped Idaho Inmate and Suspected Accomplice Captured After Manhunt. The inmate who escaped from an Idaho prison and his suspected accomplice who shot corrections officers in Boise and set off a manhunt were taken into custody Thursday. So, uh, I believe they broke out early Wednesday morning, probably like 2.30 in the morning, from a hospital, which we're going to get into. But it didn't take long for them to capture them. That's the normality with these escaped inmates. A lot of these guys only get away for about, you know, 48, 72 hours. It seems like they have a lot of planning going into getting out of these facilities or whatever, but they don't have enough when it comes down to escaping them after the fact. But the officials say that they are investigating two other deaths that may be linked to the men. And that's what I was saying in the intro about, I assumed that if these guys are going to shoot at the correctional officers inside of a hospital, and I don't know if y'all know the details, that's kind of what it is, they're willing to do anything, even kill. And on my live stream, I said I wouldn't be surprised if they end up killing some people while they're running. Now, they can't confirm that these two deaths are related to them escaping, but there's some things that's, you know, kind of linking them to this situation. We're going to get there in one second. But Skylar Mead and Nicholas Umfenauer, they were arrested in Twin Falls, Idaho, around 2 p.m. Now, Mr. Meade, the one that broke out, believe it or not, he was already serving a 20 year sentence for shooting at a sergeant in Twin Falls. So it's pretty wild that they got captured in the same area that the dude got sentenced from. Like, I wouldn't have went nowhere near Twin Falls. But that's just me. It says, Thursday, after a short car chase, Boise Police Chief Ron Winnegar said no gunfire was exchanged during the arrest and there was no extensive use of force, he said. That surprised me when he said that because you would think they'd be shooting at the cops when they're running. Maybe they ran out of bullets. I don't know. But a third person, Tonya Huber, was also apprehended in a connection with the case. According to a statement from the Twin Falls Sheriff's Office, she was charged with eluding authorities. Oh, man, it was a female. Dang, they really put the batteries in her back, didn't they? She was charged with eluding authorities, a felony offense, and possession of a controlled substance. No further details were given of her alleged involvement. I'm sure they'll come out sooner or later. If I were to guess, she was probably the getaway driver. Idaho State Police are investigating two homicides in separate locations, one in Nez Pierce County and one in Clearwater County that may be linked to the escaped inmates. Lieutenant Colonel Sheldon Kelly said both homicides occurred within the last 24 hours. Police said the handcuffs believed to have been worn by Meade when he escaped were found at the scene of one of the homicides. That means the guy at the house either had bolt cutters, some kind of metal cutting saw, or they came prepared with a few of those in hand and just used the guy's house to break out the cuffs. I don't know, I'm sure more details of that would be coming out, but the car that suspects were initially driving in their escape was a Honda Accord. Ladies and gentlemen, everyone was saying that, man. Y'all were right. Someone said it was a, uh, a, the new E-Mustang or something, man. Come on. That was just a, a scat pack driver trying to disrespect old Mustangs. But it was located in northern Idaho, police said Thursday. Officials alleged the men then took another car that belonged to one of the other homicide victims. These guys, I don't know of Idaho, I don't think they do have the death penalty or not, but this is definitely one of those cases where they would get smoked to death if they had it. Police said that the suspects did have his car, but that they don't have details on how they got the car. The homicide investigation is ongoing, and the coroner's office will provide the identities of the victims, both adult males, and causes of death, he said, very soon. Officials have said that Meade and Umfenauer are both members of a white supremacist gang. He planned the brazen attack that wounded three corrections officers in order to free Meade. And this came after Meade was being transferred to a Boise hospital after he had injured himself in a segregation unit. If I were to guess, you know, he probably cut himself with a big enough wound that their medical staff wouldn't be able to fix. 
But I'm going to get into some more of the details of what I think happened for them to be able to do this because, you know, it's not an easy task. Let's just put it like that. There had to been a lot of planning into this, but obviously not enough planning after they escaped, right? They got got just a few hours later. But we know with near certainty this was not an accident. Of course it wasn't, man. Stop said Josh T. Walt, director of the Corrections Department. This was a planned event, and we're channeling every resource we have into trying to understand exactly how they went about planning it. Me, 31, was already serving a 20-year prison sentence for shooting at a sheriff sergeant during a high-speed chase. At 2.15 a.m. Wednesday, state Corrections Department officers were trying to transfer him back to the correctional facility after he was taken to St. Alphonsus Regional Medical Center for Treatment. Hopefully I pronounced that one right. Mead performed injurious behavior Tuesday night while at a maximum security facility, and prison medical staff determined he needed to be treated at the hospital, where he arrived shortly before 10 p.m. local time. During the attempt to transfer Mead back to the corrections facility, Umfenauer fired at the officers, police said. Two of the officers were shot, one faced non-life-threatening injuries, while the other was stable in critical condition following the shooting. The pair then fled the scene, setting off a manhunt that stretched into Thursday afternoon. Security during Meade's transfer was augmented because of his criminal history and Meade was wearing restraints. T. Walt says that he added he believes staff adhered to the department's policies. It sounds like they did, you know, had him all cuffed up, shackled, and they had guards walking him to and fro. They, he wasn't unattended. So they were doing what they were supposed to do. You know, I'm sure these COs are going to get some medals if they even give medals out to individuals like that. I'm not quite sure. But one of the responding officers fired at the armed person who was at the entrance of the hospital, who was later determined to be corrections department officer. How does that happen? Were these COs or whatever in plain clothes? Because you would think an officer arriving at a scene, seeing a CO with a gun in his hand or something, in uniform, you would suspect that that ain't the guy to shoot at, right? So that's why I'm thinking maybe they, they had street clothes on and they had no idea. T. Walt said Thursday that one of the officers was released from the hospital Wednesday night and that the other two remain in hospital but are in stable and improving condition. Now, Meade was being held in administrative segregation, a form of restrictive housing that is in its highest custody level. Now, in segregation unit, you don't get much time on the phone, let alone it's like five times harder to get contraband in there, depending on the situation, I guess. But he would have had to have planned this somehow, right? There's only three ways, you know, contraband cell phone, the real phone from the prison, which I can almost guarantee he didn't use because everything's recorded unless they have coded words. Or third of all, just plain old letters writing letters, or maybe writing a kite to another inmate, and that inmate sends word to the streets. It's still extremely hard to get some plans like that out without anybody noticing. It takes some finagling. But this is the thing as well. You know, inmates, they know the process. This guy had to have known how bad an injury had to have been for him to be shipped to a hospital. That's the first thing that I know had to be planned out. Now, Authority said that both Meade and Umfenauer are members of the Aryan Knights, one of multiple security threat groups that we monitor and try to interrupt their activities. Anybody out there heard of the Aryan Knights? You know, what's wild to me is, and it's not just the Aryan side of things, it can happen in other gangs as well, but a lot of these organizations, they're not sanctioned by the original organization. So they're kind of like subcontractors or rogue groups doing their own thing in each state. And it just blows my mind that they would support such a thing where if they go to another state and say that they're a part of something like that, the chances are they're gonna be no good, right? All this stuff has to be sanctioned. I'm not saying that they're not sanctioned, I'm just saying. A lot of places, man, when they claim things, they really ain't supposed to be claiming it at all. Umfenauer has also served time and the men's sentence overlapped on and off, meaning you know uh, they probably ran into each other in the system. A few times. Maybe got in trouble, got split up, and linked back up somehow in another prison. Happens all the time. Trust me. It's a small world in there. Big, but small. And just imagine if Umfenauer was out in the streets, maybe on the run. He's facing other multiple felonies. Man, he ain't got nothing to lose. So why not try to break OG Meade out, you know? Or maybe he could have been possibly a little bit forced. And he knew he was going to be going back to prison soon. And if he went back, then they would get him because he didn't follow up with what they were planning. 
You know, so the only things that could really make someone do something extreme like that is an extreme love for the group and for the people a part of it or out of pure fear, right? I mean, this guy came into a hospital blasting to get his buddy out. I mean, that guy had to have about seven car batteries put into his back for him to do that. I don't know, man. You know, I'm just trying to think outside the box a little bit on why someone would risk everything to do this. Their gang involvement doesn't necessarily indicate that this was some sort of gang-sanctioned event. The Aryan Knights are a gang within the Idaho prison system that formed in the mid-1990s for organized crime among a select group of white inmates and others who are not in custody. According to the U.S. Attorney's Office in the District of Idaho, the group has white supremacist and white separatist ideologies and was believed to have over 100 members inside and outside of Idaho prisons as of 2021. I can absolutely guarantee that those numbers were way under. But that's a bulk of it, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, they're recaptured, and uh, let's see if Idaho has the death penalty. Is there still a death penalty in Idaho? Last year, Idaho lawmakers passed a law authorizing execution by firing squad when lethal injection is not available. Oh my! That means if these guys are convicted for the murders that they think were linked to them, they could be getting the firing squad. They might be the first guys to get it. Wow. You know, honestly, if I'ma go out, please throw me in front of the firing squad, man. I don't want none of those lethals or none of those gases, none of that. Pop me once in the freaking forehead and let me meet my maker, man. It says prison officials have not yet written a standard operating policy for the use of the firing squad, nor have they constructed a facility where a firing squad execution could occur. Well, you know what? For old Mead and Umfenauer, if they start building a brand new little mini complex right there outside the prison, chances are that's where they're going to be gunned down at. Man, you know, so uh, this is pretty wild to me, actually, now that I'm looking up this stuff. I had no idea that they passed the authorization of a firing squad. But that's a wrap, ladies and gentlemen. Stay tuned. I do have plenty more content coming your way, including some interviews. I have to call someone today to try to line it up, man. I've been doing so much stuff behind the scenes with my family lately, but I'm trying to set these puppies up today. But I'm out of here. I got to go start my Final Fantasy adventure for the day. Man, it's like there's a time warp when I play that. I'll start it and I'll look down three hours. You know you're having fun when you lose track of three hours. In the meantime, though, as always, ladies and gentlemen, y'all be easy, be safe, and more importantly than anything, stay free.